Um, I kind of want to introduce a little bit and he'll introduce himself, uh, but this is our guest speaker, Nick Walker. I met him in 2017 when I did this uh, organization called Lutheran Young Adult Corps, um, where I spent a summer in Boston and also somewhat in Ohio, Nebraska, um, leading mission trips for high schoolers. Um, and he was kind of the leader of that. And he, um, you know, he, he helped, he, he um, is the owner, I think I should say of Five Sixteen Missions, owner, founder of an organization called Five Sixteen Missions, and he also works with other churches. So I will hand it over to him and um, he will get started with his, his talk. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, friends. So as Laura Lee said, I am Nick Locker. I am the director of 516 Missions out here in Boston, but also the uh, director of student and young adult ministries at First Lutheran Church of Boston. So I operate downtown Boston. Um, I had the uh, joy and the privilege of having uh, Laura Lee and uh, serve with us for a summer. Um, and we managed to not only serve there, but take a nice long road trip to, you know, out to Nebraska and back. And uh, uh, so I will say you are, I'm jealous um, and envious the fact that you have uh, her serving you guys out there. So our, always our goal is to figure out how we're going to get her back. So oh, God. she knows that I've said it, but in the meantime, uh, God has placed her uh, out uh, in your uh, neck of the woods. So congratulations on that. So um, so just a little bit about our ministry. Um, so really it's, it's missions based in the sense that um, uh, our focus in Boston is uh, uh, equipping students and young adults to, um, uh, to serve. Um, and part of that is, uh, is teaching and missions trips and that sort of thing. So we have teams that come from around the country uh, to serve for week-long trips, as well as um, sometimes we'll go across the country and do servant events and missions trips in other places. So it's really this idea of connecting students to Christ, community, and service. And, um, and so tonight, when we talk about missions, you know, I, I was given a little freedom and leeway to talk about where I want to head with this. And so um, for those of you who are, uh, I know some of you are heading to graduating to college. Some of you are getting ready to go away for the summer. Uh, uh, some of you are looking at new jobs. So um, hopefully it's, uh, I did not plan it this way, but hopefully this topic tonight will, uh, uh, will, uh, uh, serve you in a good way. So if you do have Bibles, if um, we're going to be looking at Jeremiah chapter 29 tonight. Um, and so really the context of this is when we talk about missions, one of the big things that I always remind um, folks when they come, even though they're only there for a week, uh, one of the challenges is that uh, in terms of mission and context, it's really easy to come to a place and say, oh, I'm here, but yet I'm also still back at home, or uh, I'm here, but yet I'm looking to what's going on next month or next week sometimes. And so uh, one of the things we really, really focus hard on is, is encouraging um, students and, and participants to be engaged in where they're at in the time and the space that God has placed them. Uh, and that's really what Jeremiah 29 is about. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, so for those of you who uh, have spent some time in Jeremiah, chapter 29, probably the verse that most people know uh, the most is Jeremiah 29, 11, um, which is, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to... Uh, prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and future, which by the way, fantastic verse, um, but I'm going to rip it apart for you guys tonight because it's also one of the most uh, misused uh, passages of scripture. Uh, and so we want to spend some time in um, understanding what is Jeremiah talking about, but also how does this apply to our own individual lives um, and more importantly, ministries. And I think one of the things that when I talk about uh, missions and ministry is that we all have a mission, we all have a ministry, uh, and that is whatever context that God has placed you in. And so 
uh, that's really one of those areas that we like to remind and equip um, folks to think about is that wherever you're at is your mission and ministry. So if you're a student, that is your ministry and mission. If you are uh, a teacher, that is your ministry and your mission. If you are a spouse or a husband or a wife, that is also your mission and ministry. Uh, and what does it mean uh, uh, from a scriptural standpoint of, 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 of engaging that, but also being fully present in that. And that's what uh, Jeremiah 29 really uh, kind of hits home about. So uh, if you have your Bibles, let's jump in here. Um, and we're just going to start here at uh, verse one, and I'm going to read here through uh, uh, verse 14. And it goes like this. Uh, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles and to the priests and the prophets and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem uh, to Babylon. So some context here is that uh, Israel is, is in exile. Um, in Babylon, this, you know, these are the children of Israel. They're not in their homeland. This isn't the land that God had promised them, but rather they're now in quote exile in Babylon um, physically. Uh, and this was after King Jeconah and the queen mother, the eunuchs, the officials of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen um, <clears throat> and the metal workers had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, who was Zedekiah, king of Judah. So you have all these names. Um, and here's where it gets important at verse four. And this is Jeremiah um, to the people. It says, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, uh, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. Um, for in its welfare, you will also find your welfare. Do me a favor and underline that word welfare because this is going to be key. Um, for thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord." plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. So we're going to stop right there. Uh, and so we've got what's going on here in Jeremiah is that these folks are uh, in exile. This isn't their homeland. Um, but what's happening is you've got uh, what Jeremiah calls, you know, these prophets and diviners who are saying, uh, look, this is only temporary. Uh, this is coming to an end really soon. Uh, so don't worry about it. Uh, it's, your time here is almost up, you know, coast, take it easy. Uh, but rather, here's Jeremiah coming back saying, wait a minute, that is not what God's message is to the children of Israel. Uh, he's saying actually very much the opposite. Um, and that opposite is this. He says, look, uh, build houses there, um, get married farm the land, um, build homes. Uh, and then here's where it goes um, when he says this, seek the welfare. Do anybody, does anybody know what that word welfare, how that's translated? Does anyone know what that, that word actually is uh, in Jeremiah? It's a word that you will probably, you, you've heard before. It's actually translated as shalom. So seek the shalom of the place to which I have sent you into exile. Now, when you hear the word shalom, so often it's only translated in, uh, and this is where the English language just doesn't get it right um, because it's too simplistic. We translate it as peace. You know, seek the peace of the, of, of, uh, the city where I've sent you. You know, that word shalom means peace. But it's not just, you know, peace that we know it as the absence of conflict. 
uh, but rather shalom is this fullness and richness of God, you know, the fullness and breadth of God. Um, uh, and so when it says that, it says, but seek the fullness of God in the city where I've sent you into exile uh, and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its fullness, you will find your fullness. Um, and so when we talk about ministry um, and mission, one of the things that's so hard for people to realize um, and remember is that um, sometimes we're given a ministry in a context that we don't want, or it's not the ministry that we had envisioned or hoped for, or the context to which we had hoped that we were going to be at. Um, and it's so easy to say, look, this is only for a temporary period. So for instance, Josh, you said you're about to graduate. Um, and, uh, and this is just a great illustration here of, uh, shall we, you know, you talk about senioritis um, and you're like, I'm ready to go. Uh, I, you know, I'm looking for that job or maybe you already have a job lined up. Maybe you have things, here's where you're headed. Um, and so it's like, look, I know where I'm headed. I, you know, this end of the chapters, you know, even though it's not done, I'm living, trying to live into the next chapter. Um, but God's, you know, thing here is that, look, even though you know where you're headed, even you know that there is a promise of something else, um, in your case, hopefully something better, uh, that you're looking for to hoping for moving towards, um, it's really easy to get caught up in that moment of looking forward, but God is saying, look, no, I want you to live now in the moment that I've placed you because it's in this time and this place and in this space uh, that you are gonna find what you're actually seeking. Uh, Cause it's so easy to think about, well, the future is so much better. The future has all these things, but God still has things for you now in the context to which you have been placed. Uh, the same is true of, um, uh, if you're, you know, for instance, if you're uh, in a job where, hey, maybe you're a teacher now, uh, but you're thinking, well, I want to be a principal down the road or wherever that may be. There's a promotion coming down the road. Um, and so, hey, I'm looking to that. And then I'm, I'm now beginning to miss out on what God has placed me to do now, which is to live fully into the context to which he has placed you. So, you know, consider those places where I'm headed there, but I'm not there yet. That's your exile. You know, uh, promotion's coming, but it's not there yet. That's your exile. Uh, I'm a student now and I'm graduating, but I'm not graduating yet. This is your space of exile that God is, you know, inviting you to live fully into. And that's what we're talking about here in Jeremiah, because it's so easy that the world is going to tell you, look, all the great things are coming. Uh, you know, this is only temporary, but here's the reality. Uh, God's context for you is the time and space that he decides, not what you and I decide. Uh, and that's one of the challenges that I've had to learn when it comes to ministry, uh, because again, I can tell you there, there are places in my ministry that I never thought I would be at. I thought I would be somewhere completely different at this stage of my life. Um, I'm 30, almost 37 years old. And when I started ministry 17 years ago, uh, I had a whole different outlook of what this might look like. Um, and I had my own plan, my own vision, uh, but then God decided and he had his own plan and his own vision for my life. Uh, and I needed to learn to live into that. Um, and what that meant for me was definitely a bit of a learning curve, uh, but also in that learning, there were so many cool things that I learned not only along the way, but the benefits of, uh, shall we say, not living into one's context. Uh, there were definitely some bumpy roads. There were a lot of challenges in that. Um, but at the same time, uh, I can look back now and impart hopefully some of that wisdom onto you guys as uh, people who are earlier in life. And uh, even though I'm not that old, uh, I've been doing this for uh, the better part of you know, now 17, 18 years. Um, and it's one of those things that starting a ministry um, but also serving in multiple congregations. This is something I've had to learn because I knew a lot of these places weren't my permanent resting place. Um, I know even now where I'm serving at is not my permanent resting place, but uh, 
I could learn to either say, hey, I'm only here for a temporary season. I don't need to worry about this. Or I can learn to live into the fullness and richness of the context to which God has placed me. And that's what Jeremiah is talking about. Um, because when we talk about a hope and a future, uh, it, it is that promise that when I step into my context, when I step into God's story in that place, their provision happens. So I guess my question to throw out to you is, uh, what does it mean to live into the context to which God has placed you? Because um, this is really the crux of the conversation for, for our time tonight. So I want to open up that discussion to you guys. Is what, when you think about that, what does that mean? Um, yeah, we'll kind of open it up. I'll kind of go first. I, I mean, I think it's one of those things of balancing of when we're looking ahead, you know, it's not that it's not bad to look ahead and realize, oh, this is where I'm going to be in two months, or this is where I'm going to be in four months or whatever, but not living in that way and being like, and not, um, kind of what you're, you're saying, Nick, of just kind of being in the place where you're at and not con not 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 continuously looking to the future and be like oh i'm gonna i'm not even gonna be here in two months so like why even try or like why even do the best that i can now um but really kind of um trusting in god and, and letting him guide you and continue to um use the gifts that he's given you to be in the place that you are um and uh yeah and continue to connect with the people that are in your life right now instead of just continually saying oh i'm, I'm not even going to be here so i don't even need to try or you know i'm just gonna continually live in the future instead of the now anybody else would like to add to that uh i think for me the words i think about are like engagement awareness and like focus on the things that you are currently doing and are involved in um because i feel like for me when i think about future things it's usually because of worry and i think um i think it's just kind of a lesson of like you don't have to worry like god has a plan for you um and he will take care of you so i think it's about yeah just like focusing on what you are currently doing, being a, like awareness of what's currently happening around you um, and like just being engaged in the current moment of what you're doing and participating in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, another way to think about it is, is um, am I one foot in and am I one foot out or am I both feet in? Mm. Um, and this kind of goes to uh, Matthew chapter six, which talks about uh, being the servant of two masters. Uh, the reality here is when we talk about uh, uh, mission and being, you know, both feet in is that uh, in order for us to, to see fully what God is doing um, is that my feet have to be both in where I'm at. Uh, and so if you're one foot out the door already, you know, what do you miss out on? Uh, and this isn't just a talking, and this isn't just about, um, hey, you know, my position or my job, but this is also when we talk about relationships. Um, you know, are you both feet in in the relationships that you, you have around you? Um, or is it, hey, and you know, I'm one foot in, one foot out. Uh, when we talk about the context of our missions trips, um, you know, it's a, it's a one week kind of you know, bookended uh, deal. Uh, and really, you have the option to say, look, I'm going to be here or I'm not. Uh, and that's, that, that is entirely up to you. Uh, entirely up to you to engage somebody in, in relationship. Um, even if it's, you know, it's only for a short period of time. Uh, and there are those who will take a look at this and say, look, I'm only here for a week, so why, how can I possibly make friends or meaningful relationships 
uh, in just a short period of time. Uh, I'm going to use Laura Lee as an example where as a, as a director or as a supervisor, I have that same question as well, uh, where she was with us for, for three months. And it's and actually a little less than that. And to be honest, three months is a really short period of time. Um, and Laura Lee had an option because she was going back to school. She knew where she was headed. Um, but one of the things that uh, I had the privilege of watching is that like on day one, she was jumping in uh, with students. Um, one of our uh, uh, local parishioners, um, he's the, uh, the admin at a church, uh, he's got a daughter and she is like known as being like the most shy person in the world. She does not connect uh, with people very easily. Uh, and one of the things that we saw with Laura Lee uh, is that uh, she came in, she had not been there more than a couple hours. Uh, and what she did is she's like, I'm here. She jumps in uh, and over the course of just a few hours and over the course of a few days, this girl opened up in ways that one, we never thought was even possible with her. Um, and it was because somebody took the time to say, look, I'm gonna be all in with you, uh, playing games, playing cards, and just talking to you. Uh, and likewise, over the course of the summer with these missions trips, um, when somebody is fully engaged with you, you, you know, in your mission, those people respond differently as well. Uh, thinking about when you're out to dinner or you're on a date, you know, I'll use this as a great example. You know if the person across the table from you is, is in or out. You know, are they, you know, are they engaged with you or it's more or less, eh, I'm out, you know relationship is that sense that uh, this person is with me they're they're you know we're making eye contact but uh and you know if they're in or out in the context of like they are present are they fully present or not uh, and that's really what we're talking about in the context of mission uh, wherever you are am i both feet in engaged with people uh because then here's the promise that god gives us is that when I step into that, when I am both feet in, there you find this fullness of God uh, and contentment and joy. Because here's the other reality is if we're always looking to the future, uh, uh, we, will, that sh we are not going to be content because that next future is one thing, but then it's always going to be uh, the next and the next, you know, bigger, better. Uh, um, and, and God is saying, look, uh, when you are fully to satisfaction, that's where you're going to find your joy. Um, and that's where you're going to find your fulfillment um, in ministry. And to be honest, in life and relationship, it's when I'm both feet in, uh, in the place that God has placed me. Um, and I think that's one of those lessons. If you can learn young, young in your careers, young in life, uh, uh, it took me several years in ministry to understand this. Uh, but when I learned that, man, life changed so dramatically um, in, in my ministry um, because that's God's promise. It's when you are fully engaged. Look, I have everything you need. Everything you want is in this space that I, that I placed you. Uh, and when you're there, you're there. And you begin to see how God is working in the midst of all of this. Um, and then here's the other piece of that is uh, when I'm fully present um, in the context to which God has placed me, miraculously, all the things that we need are right there with us. God provides, whether it be financial, whether it be uh, relationally, whether it be all these things, that's the promise of God, you know, when he says, I will give you a hope and a future. But there is that caveat there. It's not this, hey, I'm giving you a blank check of hope and a future. Uh, but it is when I am both feet in, when I am fully, you know, engaged in the context to which I have placed you, there's hope and a future you know so there is says i you know for the blessing all these sort of things uh it means hey i have to be fully embraced in god's story uh with both feet in does that make sense do you see where i'm heading here 
Uh, and so I want you to think about um, now is um, what are you life and put your one foot in and one foot out. Wait, can you repeat that? Um, and you were kind of breaking up a little bit. Uh, what are areas of your life that you find that you tend to be one foot in and one foot out? Is this an answering time or is this a rhetorical question? Yes, this, this, I'm throwing it out there. Okay, okay. Yes, anyone would like to um, chime in? I feel like for me, a lot of times just when I'm having face-to-face -face conversations with other people, a lot of times I'm like, I find myself thinking of something else or thinking of what I'm gonna say next as opposed to just fully being engaged and listening to what they're saying and then responding after that based on what they've said. Hmm. Yes, I do that a lot. <laughs> Don't understand. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think definitely socially I do that. And also just even in the context, I, don't, I never thought that I was really a futuristic type of person, but I think in a lot of ways I kind of am if I know what my future is like I you know I know what I'm probably going to do after this call I know what I'm going to be doing this week I know what I'm going to be doing in the next month you know but I think when it gets to be foggy or not or I don't know what's coming in the next year or the next two years or next three years or whatever then it gets kind of scary for me I think and I'm not fully in the moment you know so I think I, I yeah I think I, I can be when I know what's going to happen when I don't know what's going to happen, I don't, you know, I don't have that, but mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else would like to add anything? I guess I have one more thing. Um, and it's about like the, I'm going to be moving to Massachusetts for my job that I got. Um, so I think I'm so worried about the uncertainties that come with all of that, that I kind of caught myself in the last few weeks turning my whole life into a big to-do list and just filling up more and more things that I had to do and organizing all my habits in my calendar. So I was so obsessed with like going through that list that I wasn't really paying attention to anything going around me in life. I was just, can I get this thing done? Can I get this next thing done? And always thinking about the next thing and never really enjoying the moment at all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where in Massachusetts are you moving to? Um, I'm not exactly sure what city I'll be in yet even, but I'm going to be working in Framingham. So probably either Framingham or Worcester. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the deal. When you come, I know exactly where that is. Uh, I'll have Laura Lee pass along information. We'll show you around. We'll take you into the city. Uh, we'll find you a lobster and we'll buy you lunch. Um, Great. So <laughs> Nick will take um, good care of you, Jess. <laughs> are you in Massachusetts as well? I am. Yeah. Oh, so cool. I'm right outside the Boston area. So awesome. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Anybody else have anything to say about that question before we move on? Yeah. So I just have a question. Um, what, so if you're to be present and like, so just in life in general, like, uh, like, so are we talking, you know, like, a mission mission related like specifically or are we talking about all relationships um is it just i'm, I'm just curious what uh what yeah. part of that i i would say it's a rubric for both um so for instance um when we talk about relationally uh relationships only work if if two people are in here are actually in this together um but, you know the first thing but it's also professionally um when you think about it is uh if you were thinking about um it, in whatever context you are in your in your professional life if you're a teacher hey for this season i'm a teacher then be the best teacher that god has you know, with the skills and gifts that god has given you if you are a musician even though you know hey this isn't the, the be and end all of where my music career is going to be at uh, but in that time hey 
use your gifts fully, you know, to the best that you can. Um, because again, if we're always looking to the future, hey, that, that means there's, there's a dissatisfaction somewhere in my life. Uh, and here's the promise of God is like, is when you fully are engaged in what God is asking you to do, all of a sudden, uh, there's not only provision, but suddenly contentment and joy have this way uh, of creeping in uh, without um, you realizing it or even understanding it sometimes. Um, years ago, we were on a missions trip and I had a, a young woman who, I would admit, I was tired all week long. I, and, but there was this one young woman who I could tell wanted to have a conversation. Uh, but I did not want to have a conversation. <laughs> and I don't know what it was, but the entire week, um, and because it was, I was always on the move, I was always focused on the projects, getting the work done, making sure the wheels were, you know, returning and the trains were running on time. Uh, and then one night, because um, part of it was just in the way our days were structured, it was only at night that we would have a time, you know, an opportunity to have a conversation. Uh, and by like seven or eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, I am like dead, I am white, I wanna go to bed. Um, because if I don't, I'm really worried about the next day, about being able to, uh, uh, Laura Lee can talk about this, um, uh, that missions trips get very, very hectic, but also exhausting. And so you, when lights are out, you want those kids out, you want them in bed. Uh, but uh, this one night, it was about 11 o'clock at night, and I was walking towards my room, and we had a common space, and a kitchen was one of those areas between the guys and the girls, and I was heading to my, my wing of the, uh, of the, our housing unit, uh, and she just kind of just literally just plants herself and sits on the floor, like blocks my path, uh, to get to, to, to my room, and she's like, hey, can we talk? And I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I was so close. I was 10 feet away from my room, my door, I could see it. Um, but at that moment, there was this thing that all of a sudden, like God is telling me, just sit down. Uh, and so over the course of like the next three, four hours, uh, she proceeds to not only tell me her faith story, but then also just had questions about the Bible study and all these sort of things. Um, and there are two ways I could have reacted there. One, I could have been like, man, in the back of my mind, always waiting, like looking at my watch and like, is this almost over? Uh, but for whatever reason, all of a sudden, you know, the conversation is engaging and uh, three, four hours passes. And it's like three, four o'clock in the morning by the time we're done with this conversation. Um, and then I head to bed and I'm thinking, man, this is, there's no way I'm going to be able to run an entire day of missions trips tomorrow or projects the next day and I wake up two hours later and let me tell you I was refreshed I was restored um, I was encouraged um, and I was not tired at all the next day even though I had been up for like 19 hours straight the day before with everything that happened. Um, and it was just, you know, an example of how when I, you know, step fully into what God has placed, the context, sometimes it's inconvenient, sometimes it's unexpected. Um, but then all of a sudden God's provision was like my fear of not having enough rest to operate was all of a sudden I had this abundance of energy. Um, and that is the case uh, when we talk about, you know, our, uh, I think sometimes one of the reasons why we're one foot in, one foot out really does have a sense of fear of something, fear of either not having what we need to do what we're, you know, we're hoping to do or what God has asked us to do, uh, fear of the future, fear of the present, fear of relationship maybe, um, or where that might lead. Um, but again, this is the promise of God. When you step into my story, there I provide all you need. Uh, and that becomes, the, and when that becomes the rhythm and the model for your ministry uh, and the way you live your life, one, a whole new world opens up uh, because you begin to see that God in, in the midst of all these circumstances, uh, you begin to see him in new in, in ways that you never would have imagined. Um, but then that also becomes the building blocks for your faith growing, you know, as that continues to grow, because then all of a sudden I look back and say, you remember that time that I thought God was not going to be there or not going to provide, um, but wait a minute, he did there. 
uh, and then he did there. And then again and again, and these building blocks of faith um, start by just stepping into the story that God has placed in your life. Uh, so again, whether that be your work, a relationship, whether that be uh, education, whether it be a mission, uh, you know, just a short-term missions trip. Um, you, what does it mean to fully take advantage of what God is? Um, you may know that God has placed you someplace else. So here's, here's God's must plant your roots if only for a week. You know, plant your roots, you know, because I promise you God is trying to show you something even just in these next six weeks or months. And that could be years. Uh, or in a relationship with a friend. But, you know, that's um, that's what Jeremiah 29 is talking about. Um, in that same vein, when we look at Matthew chapter 6, you know, it goes from, hey, you can't be the servant of two masters. Uh, but then it says this, um, look, seek first the kingdom, uh, because I give you all that you need in that seeking. Seek God, seek the fullness, seek the shalom and peace. Uh, because, and there's the promise of God as well. It says, when you seek that, when you seek the welfare of the city that God has placed you, uh, placed you in, there you find your welfare, is what uh, Jeremiah says. You know, when you seek the fullness of God in the context to which I have placed you, there you find the fullness of God in the context to which I have placed you. Do you see how this works? You know, that's the exciting promise of, of, of the faith journey. Uh, and of ministry is that when I'm in, when I'm praying, when I'm seeking, you know, that context um, and, and everything that's around it, and God all of a sudden is providing. Um, and there I find all that I need. Um, and so that really just is pretty much all I really wanted to talk about with you guys. Uh, in your own life, and maybe consider here, what, what, what is God calling me to do in this season? What is God asking of me in this season? Um, and where are my feet? Are they both in, or is one foot in and one foot out? Uh, and if one foot is out, uh, then, you know, it's the encouragement, but also the challenge to you to think about, all right, um, you know, and at that place, uh, that begins, you know, a place of prayer, but also a place of encouragement saying, look, you can take one foot out, but the, by the way, you can bring that other foot back in um, and see where God takes you. All right. So that's, that's my encouragement for each of you. Um, that's kind of the extent of what I want to talk about in the context of mission, um, because I, my belief and in my practice over the years is uh, if you can learn that foundation, uh, and if you learn to live that context, uh, not only does life get easier, um, but uh, uh, in the, let me put it, let me phrase it better. Uh, life will get easier in the context that I know God provides. It doesn't mean your circumstance is going to get easier. Sometimes, yes, life is going to get harder. But all of a sudden, though, when I am fully engaged, uh, even in the hardship, there I find satisfaction and joy even in the midst of hardship. Uh, and that's the promise of God. Um, so I, I don't want to say it's a cakewalk, but I do promise you this. Um, and Laura Lee, I think, can uh, attest to this, that even when there are challenges or fatigue and you have youth group leaders or students that are all of a sudden, you know, um, or uh, you have been up for 24 hours state driving um, from Nebraska back to Boston, um, you did that to probably yeah. to I know her mother's chagrin, so I, I appreciate uh, <laughs> her trusting that she's you know, um, but she brought my car home in one piece, uh, more than once. <laughs> That's right, it's close call, um, <laughs> but but yeah. But let me turn chips. There was still joy and contentment and satisfaction. And that's really what this life is about, um, is, is um, seeing God uh, and then finding that contentment in him when we find it in those exiled places. So uh, any questions? Yeah. Mm, good stuff.
Yeah, any questions of, of, of anything that we talked about, you know, any comments or anything, um, anything or personal questions so, or anything that he said too? Yeah. You can say something, Nick. You're kind of like, but we can, audio keeps coming in semi okay. Were you going to say something, Nick, or no? No, sorry. Okay. No, just, okay. So I'm, I'm turning it over to you. Okay. Yes. Any, any other, anybody have any comments or questions about to Nick or about everything that we, any, uh, anything that he talked about um, in his, in his talk? Yeah. So my question that I have is how do I know? Um, so if I'm going to be to, you know, with uh, both feet in, so to speak, and be fully engaged in, um, you know, certain things, uh, how do I know that's where I'm supposed to be or what, you know what I mean? Like, even if I'm engaged with somebody or someone, what does that kind of lend to itself and it'll work if it works out, then it's, it's meant to work out. And if it doesn't, then it wasn't meant to work out. That kind of thing. That's just kind of my question. Um, because, you know, basically for me, like, um, I've, you know, I've done, oh, in, sorry, I didn't. In context of. Yeah, he's, he's a little slow. Sorry. Oh, Nick, you, you came in a little delayed, so we weren't sure if you were, were going to talk. But go ahead. Go ahead. You talking about me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Go ahead. I, I guess I was just asking a clarifying question. Uh, when you're talking about engagement, are you talking about like a marriage relationship or are you talking about or just being engaged, you know, in general uh, in life? Uh, just like in general, yeah, just like just work and like, you know, uh, okay. co workers, friends, stuff like that. Okay, yes. So one of the things that I, things that you want to look for, so there isn't necessarily a set formula, uh, but you'll start to notice, um, I guess the best way to, uh, to talk about this is you're going to start to see fruit that's born out of that relationship or out of that engagement. Um, so and when I use the word fruit, I mean, uh, you know, from the scriptural, you know, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. You start to look at some of these things. Um, and do you see fruit that is growing um, out of the context to which you're in? So, hey, do I see, uh, whether it be in a relationship with somebody, do I see that relationship getting deeper um, and growing? Do I see in my job um, that all of a sudden, now that I'm fully engaged in this, that not only am I finding contentment, but by the way, am I seeing fruit coming out of the product that I'm doing um, in my job and in my work? Um, that tends to be the, when I think about, you know, how do I know, uh, is because you're gonna start to see that fruit grow. Hence, Okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah, the way you put it like that. Anybody else have any other questions or comments? Do you have any advice on like a daily or weekly habit or something just to continually remind yourself of this lesson to put yourself back in that place? Because I'm I'm sure it's hard over time to continually remember um, this as seasons change and circumstances change. Hold on, Nick. You know, my habit would be uh, things on a daily basis. Yeah. There we go. Uh, to be honest, best way the gratitude journal. It sounds kind of hokey, uh, but if you can take three to five things on a daily basis uh, and just start writing those things down where you see fruit and gratitude, uh, those will begin to serve as that reminder. 
of this is what God has been doing in my life um, and where I'm seeing his presence. Um, because uh, that to me is probably the most encouraging thing because those are easy things to overlook and they don't have to be big things, uh, but just on a daily basis, hey, give thanks for these things and write them down um, and see where that leads because that becomes a place of encouragement, but also a place of reminder of how God is providing uh, in your context. Thank you. Oh, good. Yep. I would also kind of say, just in general to everything that we we're talking about, this is something that Nick taught me um, over the course of the two and a half months that we were together, um, that it's not about what you do, it's what God does through you. And I think that has a lot to do with what we've been talking about, you know, putting, you know, two feet in and using the place where God God has for you because I think sometimes we get and this is me too sometimes we all get distracted of of, of places and what we're doing and yeah the, the place where we're at and the job that we're in and I think a lot of it you know we need to look at the at what God is doing in our life more than like where we are and more than what we do because um, we're not you know who we are is not based on where we are or what we're doing. It's based on who he is. And and I think, you know, everybody doesn't, because I work in church work and doesn't necessarily, you know, this is for everybody. It's not just for people who work in church work. But for me, I think it's important to let my faith lead my life rather than my job or where I am lead my faith, if that makes sense. So putting my faith first, knowing that I'm not a DCE first. I'm not a person that lives in Ohio first. I'm a child of God first. And um, that leads me and kind of connects with what we're talking about of, of you know, finding that foundation and, and finding that um, those resources and that provision in God more than what you're doing or where you're at. And I think that just that's something that has st stuck with me since since the time that we worked together and that's something that's always been something i definitely need to be reminded of but something that i've taken away from what nick has taught me too so any other questions or comments before we break out into to do prayers with each other so basically, as long as the fruits uh, of your labor are plentiful, or they're, you know, in some kind of type of prosperity, right, is going to be a good kind of lead on whether or not if you're not necessarily job or right place, but uh, maybe just like the right level of engagement and things and with people and, um, you know, that it kind of in that, that sense, or? I want to caution, you know, on the word prosperity, um, because uh, I think one of the things that we also have to be reminded of is when we talk about fruit, uh, you know, th those are things that God is producing um, in us. Uh, and I will say this, sometimes, the fruit that God produces isn't always the fruit that we want, you know, so it's not always going to be, hey, I'm, uh, when I say fruit is going to be produced, it's, you're going to see that God is producing this fruit around us. Um, and uh, when we, you know, you know, this, this, is, uh, this goes to John 15, I am the vine, you are the true uh, branch. Um, uh, he who abides in me will bear much fruit. Um, it is that context that when I am in that relationship with God, when I am in that relationship with another person, um, uh, you know, that benchmark um, is, you know, that I use for fruit is saying that, look, things are coming out of that, um, that are healthy and growing. Um, but, I, but I do caution the word of um, prosperity may not be the right word to use there because that, it's a very human term. Um, a very worldly term, but rather uh, the fruit that we're looking for is spiritual. 
Um, and so that spiritual fruit that we're looking for, you know, am I finding patience? Am I finding greater depths of, uh, of joy and peace and fullness? That's the fruit we're talking about. Um, because ultimately, that's the fruit that matters. And by the way, that's ultimately the only fruit that's going to satisfy you. Um, and that's, so uh, those are those benchmarks, you know, take a look at that, uh, you know, the fruits of the spirit, um, as a benchmark of is, you know, uh, of growth happening. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, yeah. Any others? Um, questions or comments. I think I would just say, um, yeah, thanks, Nick, for coming on and, and, and talking with us and, and kind of reminding us, you know, I think in a lot of ways, when we talk about missions, just kind of to close it out, we talk about mission conversations, and we see people's you know, faith and, and, and their ministry and, and looking at other, wh how, what other people have gone through. I think that is such a good, um, you know, example for us. Um, but at the same time, I think in a lot of ways, wherever you are, whatever job you're at, you know, you don't have to necessarily be uh, this person that preaches to thousands of people or whatever. Um, you can, you can, you know, God can use you in, in the job that you're at in the, in the places where you are, where, Maybe some people who have, you know, who are missionaries or whatever can't go, you know, that's kind of the, the awesome thing about the body of Christ is that we all have different gifts and we all have different abilities and we're all in different places. Um, and, you know, we can, even though sometimes I've heard people say, you know, I can't tell other people about God because I don't know enough, you know, I'm not like a pastor or anything like that. Um, a lot of it has to do with, you know, your relationships with people and God guiding you in the places you're in. And, you know, like what Nick is saying is that God will provide um, everything that you need in the places where you're at. And so, you know, we don't have to, you don't necessarily have to be this, this grand missionary um, to, to spread the word of God and to spread his love. And so um, as we, you know, as we kind of close out, that's kind of the encouragement too, is, um, you know, knowing, I mean, look at the people in the Bible. There's a lot of people that weren't qualified or, you know, were kind of the people that you wouldn't expect to spread the word of God. And yet it, it happened. So um, I think that's kind of just the encouragement um, to you guys as well in your own life um, that, um, you know, missions can happen wherever. It doesn't have to be a far off country or whatever. So um, yes, any other lasting comments? I'm going to pray us all out and then I'm going to ask what we want to do next after this and then we'll break out into pairs and just spend some time in prayer and then you can just leave whenever so any other lasting comments questions um before we do that cool cool all right i'll pray us out uh dear god thank you so much for bringing us all here to hear about um, what Nick has, has taught us about in Jeremiah and knowing that, um, you know, you provide for us wherever we are um, at and you give us what we need. Um, I pray that you would um, help encourage us and, and give us um, wisdom and strength and peace um, in the places where we're at, um, knowing that you called us um, where we are for a reason and um, wherever we go, that you will always be there for us, um, guiding us and um, giving us those opportunities to, to uh, show your love um, and, and to spread your word with others. Um, thank you for all that you've done for us and thank you especially this week as we celebrate um, your, your resurrection. Um, and I pray that we would never um, take that for granted and we would, um, that this would be a good time to, to remember that and to celebrate that. Um, we love you so much. In your name I pray, amen.